ओके वेलकम गाइस इन दिस टॉपिक वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द ब्रांच इन अमीनो एसिड व्हाट आर द ब्रांच इन अमीनो एसिड वी हैव इज वी विल रिमेंबर द ब्रांच इन अमीनो एसिड विद द न्यूमोनिक लाइव टू हैव अ ब्रांच रिलेशनशिप द पर्सन हैज टू बी लाइव हार्टेड सो द ब्रांच इन अमीनो एसिड दैट वी हैव इज ल्यूसिन आइसोल्यूसिन एंड वेलिन ल्यूसिन आइसोल्यूसिन एंड वेलिन एल आई वी दिस इज हाउ वी यूज टू रिमेंबर ल्यूसिन आइसोल्यूसिन वेलिन Now, when it comes to the metabolism part, uh, the metabolism of the branch in amino acid, they share a common metabolism pathway. Metabolism of branch in amino acid, they share a common metabolism pathway in a way that, see, the leucine, isoleucine, and valine. First, they will convert into their respective alpha keto acid. They will convert into their respective alpha keto acid. Alpha keto acid. these respective alpha keto acid these alpha keto acid then ultimately will convert into their ultimate metabolites will convert into their ultimate metabolites so what is important to understand see i am saying that uh, leucine iso uh, leucine and valine they will share a common metabolic pathway and they will convert into their respective alpha keto acid and they that will convert into ultimate metabolite for that we require an enzyme and that enzyme that is going to be required for this reaction is that is called as the branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase alpha keto acid dehydrogenase complex the enzyme that is required is called as branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase complex complex i will i will understand you i will make you understand what is the meaning of complex here uh the reason why it is called as complex because there are certain things which are happening in this reaction it is not just the one reaction that is happening there are certain things that is happening let's go step by step the first thing that is happening is there is removal of the carbon dioxide means there is decarboxylation that is happening then the second thing that is happening in this reaction is we transfer a coenzyme a transfer coenzyme a that is called as trans acylation that is called as trans acylation then the third thing that is happening in this reaction is the nad comes into action and converts into nadh so there are several components that are occurring in this reaction there is decarboxylation there is trans acylation there is nad converting into nadh so it is called as a complex enzyme it's not simple reaction it's a complex reaction when it comes to the the coenzyme When it comes to the coenzyme the coenzymes are vitamin b1 b2 b3 b5 and lipoamide there are several coenzymes that are required for the branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase the coenzymes are b1 b2 b3 b5 and lipoamide let's understand the details of the branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase complex so that you will understand that why we are talking so much about this enzyme so the details uh, when it comes to the branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase complex i am saying that it is basically it is doing three reactions it is doing three reactions so this branch chain amino acid branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase is basically made up of three sub units of the enzyme that is written as e1 e2 and e3 there are three sub units what is the e1 name e1 is basically is the decarboxylation means the decarboxylase e2 is basically it is the trans acylase trans acylase means you are transferring the coenzyme and e3 is basically whenever i told you that whenever nad nadh is coming in any reaction it is the dehydrogenase dehydrogenase so these are the three components of the branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase when it comes to the coenzymes of each of the subunit coenzyme e1 the coenzyme is vitamin b1 e1 the coenzyme is b1 e1 b1 this is how you need to remember e3 the coenzyme is vitamin b3 and b2 so e1 b1 e3 is b3 b2 e2 is vitamin b5 means comes out to be 25 2 5 25 Along with that, it also requires lipoamide. So 
it is a complex enzyme and as you can see that uh, there are several subunits are there e1 e2 and e3 and the coenzymes are written here now what happens is if there is defect in this enzyme let's say defect in branch in alpha keto acid dehydrogenase it leads to a condition that is called as leads to a condition that is called as something called as maple syrup urine disease that is referred as maple syrup urine disease so maple syrup urine disease is due to deficiency of which enzyme branch and alpha keto acid dehydrogenase but as i told you that there are three subunits e1 e2 e3 and if they ask that which subunit is defective which subunit is defective then you need to give the answer as e1 so i can say it is the the main pathology is the main pathology is there is defect in the e1 subunit that is the most common one e1 subunit defect e1 is for what e1 is for what e1 what it is doing is oxidative uh, it is doing the decarboxylation so i can say that even if it is defective means that the reaction which is going to be defective is the decarboxylation so the reaction that is defective in the maple syrup urine disease reaction defective is the oxidative decarboxylation oxidative decarboxylation because the e1 subunit is not working so the decarboxylation will not occur so if they ask in maple syrup urine disease which reaction is defective which reaction is defective it's not the dehydrogenation because the name is dehydrogen that doesn't mean that the dehydrogenation is defective which reaction is defective it's the decarboxylation i have given you the explanation why it is decarboxylation because it has three subunit e1 e2 e3 and the main culprit one for the maple syrup urine disease is the e1 right so the oxidative decarboxylation is defective and this is what they commonly ask in the exam that which reaction is defective is the oxidative decarboxylation now when it comes to the the clinical features one is very straightforward that why it is called as maple syrup the reason is that the urine and the stool will smell like maple syrup and what is the smell of maple syrup the maple syrup smells like burnt sugar so the the patient of this will have the burnt sugar smell burnt sugar smell of urine and stool this is one feature now apart from that this is the one that is very characteristic apart from that see what happens is most of the time how they are going to present uh, the patient will be of uh, will present the, the patient will be normal at birth the, the 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 child the neonate is going to be normal at birth the reason the maternal enzymes were doing the reaction when we when the child was in the fetal line normal at birth but after birth in the first week first week there will be vomiting there will be refusal to eat refusal to feed then there will be we can say lethargy can be there there can be seizure episodes can be there along with that again there is one more very characteristic thing what is that is that in the maple syrup there is increase in the tone of muscle increase in the tone of muscle and that is called as the rigidity rigidity is there and which is followed by flaccidity means decrease in the tone and this will go on there will be alternate cycles of rigidity uh, flaccidity means hypertonia hypotonia hypertonia hypotonia hyper hypo hyper hyper and this will be alternate this is called as boxing and bicycling boxing and bicycling boxing there is increase in the tone this is boxing like this boxing attitude there is increase in the tone that is boxing attitude and what is bicycling right there is flaccidity right so uh, this is called as the boxing and bicycling attitude so that is again very classical boxing and bicycling so cycles of increase in the tone and there is decrease followed by decrease in the tone that is boxing and bicycling so if you see a uh, new need presenting with these features having the the burnt sugar smell it's most likely going to cause the the maple syrup urine disease now coming to the the treatment part 
how to treat this patient how to treat this patient see i told you what is the main enzyme that is defective is the e1 subunit is the e1 subunit right e1 enzyme is defective so to activate more e1 enzyme to activate more e1 enzyme what we can do is what is the subunit of e1 what is the subunit of e1 the subunit is b1 so you need to give the high dose of vitamin b1 so somehow whatever e1 component is active that will be working more right so this is how you can do this so the treatment when it comes to treatment uh, we need to supplement the high dose of vitamin b1 this is one thing that we need to do the second thing that we need to do is we need to restrict the branch chain amino acid in the diet we need to restrict branch chain amino acid in the diet because if we will restrict that then the metabolites will not accumulate the the alternate cycles of the boxing bicycling will not occur the symptoms will disappear right this is how the the maple syrup will present and this is how they ask the question what is the main reaction defective it is the oxidative decarboxylation how we are going to treat is we are going to give the vitamin b1 the one more disease that is associated with the branch chain amino acid disorder and that is called as isovaleric acidemia isovaleric acidemia Isovaleric acid EMA is basically uh, it is a leucine metabolism defect. Only three points to be remembered. It is a leucine metabolism defect. Leucine metabolism defect. The enzyme that is defective is isovaleryl CoA dehydrogenase. It is due to deficiency of isovaleryl. CoA dehydrogenase and what is the clinical feature that we have to peculiar about is there will be the urine smells like sweaty feet urine smells like smells like sweaty feet so these are the three things that you we need to keep in mind for the isovaleric acidemia the most important thing is the isovaleric acidemia is the defect of which amino acid is a leucine metabolism defect it is a leucine metabolism defect right thank you